Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is so nice to sit in this vendor. Uh, I didn't sit here uh, almost two months. Uh, during uh, August, uh, one month, um, Hoshin has been working uh, hard to make that, that hole. <laughs> <laughs> She has been very busy and working hard, but she, now we have an uh, office worker and she is now a full-time vice abbot, so she can <coughs> focus on uh, teaching and practice with uh, the Sangha, so I, I can do something else. And uh, from now on, for uh, about five years until I my real retirement in 2023, I my focus on uh, teaching uh, Genzoe and other teaching such as uh, Dharma study group in on Wednesday and uh, uh, Genzoe twice a year and writing books. So, uh, you may not see me so too often as before, but I think this is a good sign for the growth of the Sangha. Uh, anyway, I have been uh, talking on this text, opening the hand of thought. Uh, almost for 10 years. Mm. I talk uh, almost paragraph by paragraph. So in my record, this is uh, my 209th talk on this book. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have a little more to do. So uh, in April, I finished 
the section about vow and repentance. So today I talk about one paragraph on page, if we have the text, page 127. This is a new uh, <coughs> section entitled Magnanimous Mind. Magnanimous mind, mind is one of the three minds uh, in Japanese, and those three minds is called the Sanshin. Sun is three, and the Shin is mind. Mm. Uh, and uh, the name of this temple, and also the name of this uh, community, is called Sanshin Zen community. So <coughs> this name, temple name, uh, came from those three minds, Sanshin. And the other two are nurturing, I'm sorry, N. Nurturing mind or parental. In Japanese, Roshin. Law, law literally means old, so old or mature mind. And though, uh, I told one of them, each of them later. And third is Kishin in Japanese. Ki is joy. So, uh, joyful mind. Those are called three minds. Mm. Magnanimous mind is in Japanese Dai Shin. Dai uh, literally means big, large mind, big mind, uh, <coughs> uh, matured or nurturing or parental mind, and the joyful mind are called the Sanshin by e. Dogen. Dogen was the founder of Japanese Soto school who lived uh, 13th century. He was born 1200 and died 1253. Uh, Japanese Soto Zen tradition was established by this person. And he was a great Zen master and, and also a uh, considered one of the uh, greatest uh, philosopher and also a poet, but he was basically a leader of the community, was monastery. So uh, he wrote many of the philosophical writings, like Ashobo Genzo, and he also wrote many uh, poems, both Chinese poems and Japanese poems called Waka. And he also wrote uh, regulations of the monastery, monastic regulations within monastery, how each and every monk should do, should behave. Those are three uh, main parts of his uh, writing and also his work. And these three minds appeared, uh, one of the text Dogen wrote as uh, uh, regulations. Uh, his writings about monastic regulations uh, is entitled Eihei Shingi. Hey is his uh, is the name of his temple or monastery he established in Fukui, 
Japan. And Shin is pure. And E is regulation. Regulation or rules or standard. And this uh, pure came from uh, the uh, larger, longer uh, expression called uh, uh, Shoujo Dai Kai Shu. This show uh, is the same as this word Shin, both means uh, pure or clear. And Jo is also purity. So Shoujo is a, as a compound uh, means to be pure. And Dai is great, same Dai in Dai Shin. And Kai is ocean, or sea. Dai Kai is a great ocean or great sea. And Shu is people or uh, in this case, assembly, uh, member of the community is called Shu. And uh, <coughs> Great Ocean means, uh, means the Buddhist Sangha. Uh, it is said uh, from India, you know, Sangha is a community of uh, Buddha's students and people came into the community, Buddhist community, from all different places and from all different classes of the society. Uh, whichever class in the society or place, uh, when uh, the, the, the water came into the ocean, it became one ocean. There's, there's no such uh, distinction or discrimination uh, depending upon uh, how, where this person came from, or how, uh, what kind of uh, religious or spiritual background that this person came from, or whether this person was from a rich family or a poor family or well educated or not. Uh, once those people get into the ocean, it becomes simply one ocean. There's no such uh, distinction or classification within Buddhist Sangha. So that's why Buddhist Sangha was called Dai Kai Shu. And uh, the people in the community is free from uh, defilement. Defilement uh, in Buddhist uh, sense means uh, three poisonous minds, uh, greed, uh, anger or hatred, and ignorance. Those three poisonous minds made us uh, dirty or defiled. But uh, when once people uh, enter the ocean of Buddhist Sangha, you know, to become the member of the Sangha, they have to receive the precept. So, by receiving the precept, those people are kind of protected from that kind of defilement. But of course, even when we receive the precept and take a vow, we make uh, uh, mistakes. In that case, uh, within the Sangha there is a gathering twice a month on the new moon day and a full moon day, I mean night. Uh, you know, in the lunar calendar, uh, each month, the first day of the month is new moon, and the middle of the month is full moon. And so twice a month, they had a gathering called Uposaka. And the leader of the Sangha recite the precept they received. Then 
anyone who think uh, <coughs> made some mistakes have to uh, uh, speak up that I did such and such mistakes. Then depending upon the uh, <coughs> uh, upon the nature of the mistakes, the monks need to receive some kind of uh, penalty. That is how uh, in Buddhist Sangha keep the community uh, pure and clear without defilement. Mm. So this show, so this Shingi means the rules for the those pure uh, ocean assembly. That means uh, you know the precept uh, established why established in India from the time of Shakyamuni, of course it uh, changed within the history. But when uh, Buddhism went to China, you know, the climate, a very climate and culture uh, in India and in China very different. For example, in India it was warm, warm climate, so uh, only three loaves are enough to keep the monks from cold. Uh, but in China, some places are very cold. So those three uh, loaves, three kind of workers are present work. Also in India, they ate, Buddhist monks ate only uh, twice a day before noon. In the early morning, they could, monks could eat uh, very thin gruel or porridge. And uh, formal meal for monks is only lunch before noon. After noon, they couldn't eat anything. But uh, in China, for, uh, for Chinese people, that, that is work. So they made, they made, they had to uh, make changes or uh, <coughs> difference, make difference from Indian way of living. So this Shingi is a uh, monastic regulation uh, different from Vinaya, Vinaya precept in India. In China, you know, all Buddhist monks received Vinaya precept, but when they uh, practice at the certain monastery, the, each monastery had its own regulations, especially in uh, mm -hmm. Zen monasteries. The uh, biggest difference, one of the di biggest, biggest difference uh, from Indian monastery to uh, especially Chinese Zen monastery is uh, in India, it was profited for monks to work, work working like a farming, growing uh, vegetables or grains, uh, because farming might kill the living beings, and that is, was the violation of the precept of not killing. But somehow in Chinese Zen tradition, monks started to do farming. They lived in a, mar in a mountain, made, made uh, established a monastery in the mountains that is uh, separate from the uh, lay community. So those monks didn't uh, do takuhats or begging for food every day. That was how monks were supported in India. So they started to uh, cultivate the land and uh, grow their own food. That's why, you know, uh, working in the field and also uh, cutting the woods to make the firewood and carrying the water and cooking became a very important part of monastic practice in China. So 
In India, monks never cook. They receive food for, from uh, begging. So that is one of the uh, very important difference between uh, Indian Buddhist practice, monastic practice, and especially Chinese Zen monastic practice. So working became a very important uh, part of monastic practice, especially in Zen in China. That's why Dogen made his own uh, pure standard or Shingi. And uh, <coughs> this is uh, trans this is a translation of the text Ehe Shingi. This is a collection of six in independent writings. And uh, Dogen usually uh, Shingi or regulation or uh, precept is a collection of uh, things monks should not do or should do. So it's not so interesting to mm -hmm. read the uh, uh, monastic regulations. But uh, his uh, regulation is different. Dogen wrote about Dharma. What is the meaning of uh, uh, of doing something, doing certain things? What is the uh, Dharma behind that uh, activities? Especially uh, Dogen's teaching about cook, how to cook. Cook in the Zen monastery is called Tenzo. Uh, so even today we have Tenzo at each Zen center of monasteries. And this is Tenzo was a person who has a responsibility to prepare meals for the community. And as a part of Ehe Shingi, his monastic regulation, uh, Dogen wrote a Tenzo Kyo Kun. Kyo and Kun both means, well, Kyo is teaching, and Kun is more like instructions. So Kyo Kun is a teaching or instructions for Tenzo. Uh, so Dogen discuss about uh, the routine of, uh, of the cook of each day. And also he uh, explain, not ex really explain, but express, uh, mentions what is the meaning of this work. And as at the end of this text of Tenzo Kyokun, Dogen wrote about those three minds, uh, magnanimous mind or daishin, and uh, loshin or nurturing or parental mind, and uh, kishin or joyful mind. And Dogen said, all, not only tenzo, but also all the uh, all people in the community needs to maintain these three uh, minds. Uh, Mamlanimas mind, uh, <coughs> nurturing mind, and uh, <coughs> joyful mind. So this is almost a conclusion of what Dogen taught about the work of Tenzo. And he says not only Tenzo, but all the community in the Sangha should maintain these three minds. So this is very, very practical teaching in monks' daily lives. But it's uh, really important to live together with others in harmony uh, for practice or for the Dharma. And uh, Uchiyama Roshi, my teacher, uh, wrote a commentary on 
this text Tenzo Kyokun, and that is uh, uh, this book, Defining Your Life. Defining, Defining Your Life <coughs> is the original uh, title. Uh, I don't know what is the current title of this book, something like mm -hmm. How to Cook Your Life. How to, uh, how to how do you cook your life? Uh, once it was like a, a enlightenment from the kitchen, yeah. from the kitchen yeah. to enlightenment, mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know that top publisher changed the title, which makes more interesting. <laughs> but the uh, content is the same. Anyway, so Uchiyama, for my teacher, Uchiyamuro, this uh, three minds is really important. Then I started to uh, read or study my teacher's teaching. Uh, he, before I started, I actually started to practice with him, he wrote seven or eight books and at that time I was a university student and I of course I read all of his books and almost all of, of his books what he mainly or basically what he said or he taught as an important uh, part of his practice that means our practice is uh, it's the Nigyo and the Sanshin. Uh, this is the expression which Amorosh used uh, in his last lecture at Antaiji. He retired from Antaiji in 1975, many years ago. I think I was 20, 26 or 7 years old. So it was more than 40 years ago. Mm. Uh, but he said what he has been keeping uh, in mind while he was the teacher or abbot of Antaiji. Uh, he thought these three are most important. So uh, <clears throat> he kind of uh, transmit these three points to his disciples. So since then, uh, after that, I had to, have to, I think so, <laughs> I had to come to this country and practice. Uh, without my teacher. So this teaching is my teacher. Mm. So uh, it is the means, the means sitting. One sitting. And Ningyo is two practice, practices. And these two practices is uh, vow and repentance. He said, our Zazen, one, one sitting, our Zazen has two sides or two aspects. One side, Zazen is a practice of taking a vow, Bodhisattva vow. And another side, uh, this just sitting is uh, dependence. So Zazen is both vow and repentance. That is actually, that is what he wrote in the previous uh, section of uh, this book. And so I talked about vow uh, and repentance. And uh, finally he said three minds. And this is uh, what he is going to talk, uh, discuss the rest of this section until page uh, 137 for about 10 more pages. So, uh, Sanshin, to me, Sanshin is almost like uh, his uh, conclusion 
of his teaching. Of course, most important is Zazen, but something is how our Zazen practice works in our daily lives. Whether we are living in a monastery or in uh, the uh, you know society like a, a you know family or work working work society work place or society or the society in large. So when we live together with other people, we need uh, three minds. That is, uh, dog, uh, for Dogen, three mind is a teaching, uh, a very practical teaching for monks within the monastery. But Uchamuro said, this is not only for monks in the monastery, this means three minds, but uh, anyone or anyone who live with others, uh, whether it's a Buddhist Sangha or whatever uh, community, we need three minds. Uh, that is basically what Uchan is going to discuss the rest of this section. So, uh, let me, it's already 10 to 11. <laughs> This is an introduction <laughs> <laughs> of today's talk. <laughs> but I think the important thing is, uh, is what I said. So maybe I just read this and say a few things. Uh, so if you have this book, page 127, uh, the title of this uh, section is Magranimous Mind. He talks first uh, about magnanimous or big mind. And this paragraph is an introduction of all those three minds. Uh, what it means concretely to live and work as a bodhisattva. Working, I'm sorry, waking, Waking up to universal self. This is the question Dogen, Dogen Zenji address, addresses in the Regulation for Ehe Monastery. Regulations for Ehe Monastery is Ehe Shingi, that is what I talk. Uh, this is an English translation. This book was considered so indispensable by the followers of Dogen that they carried it with them wherever they went. Wherever they went means, you know, usually uh, in Japanese Buddhism, uh, uh, of course, uh, until uh, the end of 19th century, uh, Buddhist monks didn't have a uh, have family. So, uh, then, uh, you know, the, basically, uh, the family who has uh, more than enough children, especially boys, uh, because as a Japanese uh, custom, uh, you know, only the oldest son can inherit the family business and family heritage. So the sons, uh, after second, need to go to find somewhere else, somewhere they have to live. So some of, some of them might be adapted to other family if they don't have the uh, son, actually, only men could inherit the family the business and the heritage. But daughters have to marry with to other, other family. So uh, there are the family, they had enough sons, more than enough sons. Some of them, uh, some of the boys 
were sent to the temple and they were raised as a novice. So even if they were like a seven or six or seven or nine or ten in that age, they were raised in the temple and raised by the priest and started to study at basic teaching of Buddhism and basic uh, forms uh, monks need to uh, learn. And when they became uh, <coughs> 15 or so or older, uh, the teacher, the priest, sent he, uh, he, their disciples, novices, to a monastery, like going to a school. And they received uh, the teaching and the monastic training and after completing that training, they returned to their teacher's temple and continue uh, to work with, the, with his teacher. And that is how you know, Buddhist temples in Japanese society had been continued. So this means when the novice monk went to the monastery to achieve a monk's training. Uh, the most important thing is uh, monastic regulations. So even, you know, they never let Shobo Genzo, they have to read Eheshindi because this is really necessary, practically necessary to live and practice at monasteries. That's why uh, Shingi <coughs> was uh, uh, carried with any monks who uh, left his teacher's temple and go to a monastery. So in that sense, Shingi was more important than Shobo Genzo. So that is fact, you know, uh, indispensable by the followers of Dogen, that they carried it with them wherever they went, wherever monastery. When living in a monastery, they constantly re-read re -read it, it means Eheshingi, as a guide to their activities. So they have to uh, study Eheshingi and understand how they have to behave in each and every moment, uh, day, moment. Uh, I believe, I mean Uchiyamuroshi, believe that it is a truly incomparable religious text that gives practical guidance regarding how to put Zen, I'm, I'm sorry, Zazen, how to put Zazen into practice in our daily lives. So the teachings in Eheshingi is, uh, in a sense, according to Chiamuroshi, is an uh, introduction how our <coughs> sitting practice, our Zazen practice, or our meditation practice in, in the Zendo can work outside the Zendo in our daily lives. Uh, originally, this is an instruction for monks in the monastery, but uh, what Uchamurashi is saying is not only monks who lived in the monastery, but uh, any f anyone who lived in a community with other people needs teaching or instruction <coughs> are important. daily lives, in the first chapter, in the first chapter of Ehe Shingi is Tenza Kyokun. So in the first chapter called Instructions for the Cook, that is the uh, English translation of Tenzo Kyokun. Uh, Dogen Zenji speaks of the spirit, spirit of the Bodhisattva's actual life. 
in terms of three minds or three attitudes toward life. Uh, those three minds are magnanimous mind, nurturing mind, and joyful mind. Uh, so <coughs> this is this paragraph is a uh, introduction. Uh, before uh, he talks about the importance or meanings of those three mind, magnanimous mind, uh, <coughs> nurturing mind, and uh, joyful mind. And uh, the reason why I can I create uh, my own community. Uh, after uh, I finished my terms at MZMC, I, I taught at uh, Minnesota Zen Meditation Center from 1993 to 97, 96 as a head teacher. And after, uh, in, so in 96, I established uh, Sanshin Zen community and I put this word Sanshin as a name of the community. Uh, often or usually in American Zen centers they uh, use the name of the place uh, as a part of the Zen center called uh, San Francisco Zen Center or uh, there are many. <laughs> Uh, but at that time, we didn't have a place. Only, only four people get together and decide, make decision to, to create a Zen community. So we didn't have a place. So there's no way to put that place name. Uh, I was, we thought we were looking for a suitable place to locate this community and we didn't know. That's why uh, we, I used this word Sanshin. That means, uh, and uh, that means a community in which uh, member of the community practice together with three minds. So to me, you know, this three mind is really important and uh, <clears throat> that is why, after I established this temple in Bloomington in 2003, uh, first I taught, or first we studied during, for the Wednesday Dharma study, Dharma study group, uh, weekly Dharma study group. We, first few years, we studied Ehe Shingi. Uh, I, we led entire Ehe Shingi. Uh, I knew, you know, this is not a monastery. I didn't, I didn't intend to uh, establish a monastery. Uh, so monastic regulation doesn't make sense in a sense, because this is not a monastic community. But I thought, even though this is not a monastery, still, uh, or I, because of this is mo not a monastery, in a monastery, uh, you know, there is a structure, you know, the, the abbot who has uh, uh, ultimate authority, and the uh, officers and teachers uh, who can uh, uh, lead the uh, practice and who could teach them uh, training monks. And there are uh, experienced monks, training monks, and uh, young training monks. So there is a kind of a hierarchy. And, uh, you know, new monks were taught by the elders, uh, if it's the good community, <laughs> based on Dogen's instructions. So, uh, you know, those uh, teachings in the uh, Shingi is uh, actually transmitted within the 
monastic community generation after generation. But because this is not the monastery, there's no such people, such system. And I was only, I thought I was only teacher, and all others. There are we have uh, several uh, ordained people, but uh, I think this is basically a new community. People are not familiar with monastic uh, structure or formal practice. Therefore, I, th I thought it more important that each person understand the spirit of monastic or community practice. That's why I decided to study the Ehe Shinki uh, in the very first of the history of this uh, temple. I'm not sure it, was, it worked well or not, but at least that was my intention. So, uh, if now I think the teaching in Ehe Shingi and also Tenzo Kyokun are important. So if I finish this text, uh, within five years, <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not, uh, I may start to uh, talk on this. Defining your life. Well, this is what I have to say this morning. Uh, any comments or questions or whatever you want to say? Please. Um, as I have sat uh, with, one, uh, with one sitting, two practices, three lines, I've noticed the porousness between them. And specifically within three lines, mm -hmm. um, it seems one. It doesn't matter where you start. One leads to the other, which leads to the other, which leads to the other. I think actually these three are not three. These are actually one. one that one. was my question. <laughs> that, that is how why I didn't translate. To me, Shin it cannot be a plural, but in English it has to be three minds. Means three different minds. But actually, this sensation is one three aspects of one mind. Yes. Yeah, that was my question. Yeah. <laughs> the other as and the other comment I would have with that is that also as I sit with as I sit with it, it seems that um, the one sitting, two practices, three minds, mm -hmm. they all lead to each other. Yeah. To where you have the one sitting, it leads to two practices of three lines, or three lines to one sitting, yeah. etc. It's all the one. Yeah. So. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else? Just a practical question. Which translations do you have there of the Ehishingi? Uh, this is a trans a English translation of Ehe Shingi mm -hmm. by Taigen Leighton and me. Oh. Oh, okay. And uh, published from uh, uh, State University Press. Mm -hmm. uh, New York. Uh, I have to. Is it State University New York Press? S-U-N-Y press? Yes, S-U-N-N-Y. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> About when did that come out? Uh, it was published in 1996. Oh, okay. Taigen and I worked on translation of this text in Japan. Mm -hmm. While Taigen stayed in Kyoto for three years, he came to my temple uh, twice a week. And we worked on translation of this text and which I'm also on Bendoa. Mm -hmm. So uh, this was translated uh, before 93, but this was published in 96. Mm -hmm. okay. I believe we have copies upstairs for sale. Okay. I think yeah. there are some stuff. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And this is a translation of Uchiyama Roshi's commentary on Tenzo Kyokun. Uh, as I said, the title had been changed, but this was uh, translated by one of my Dharma brothers, 
トム、ダイキス・トム・ライト、うん、and this is still available with a different title.、Mm. Okay? Thank you. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. As I said, I'm going to Europe、uh, in uh, September 10th and coming back. Uh, October 5th, but after coming back, I may not be able to、uh, work right away. And also, I need to make a preparation for November again, so I may not keep the talk in October either. So,、uh, next, probably next time I give a Sunday talk will be in November. So, I start to talk on God's mind, actually, Magnanimous mind in November. So, please come. <laughs> <laughs> But during, during my absence, you can hear the real English Dharma. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>